Hello and welcome back to the Linux Crash Course series here on Learn Linux TV, a series of tutorials that just never seems to end because there's no shortage of things to teach you guys when it comes to Linux. In fact, I'm closing in on 60 episodes as I film this one, and I'm sure by the time I get this edited and out to you guys, I might even be up to 70 by that point. Anyway, it's time for rsync to have some time in the spotlight. rsync is just awesome. It's a really cool utility you could use to transfer files between Linux servers. In another episode, I covered SCP, which does pretty much the same thing, but rsync has even more options that you can utilize that gives it even more features. And we're going to take a look at it, as well as get some hands-on examples in this video. Now, before I get into that though, I just need to take a moment to mention the sponsor for today's video, Akamai Connect to Cloud. If you're looking for a cloud provider that's affordable, flexible, and reliable, then look no further than Akamai Connected Cloud. With Akamai's cloud platform, you can spin up Linux servers quickly, and the platform contains all the features you'll need to deploy full-featured solutions. And using the marketplace, you could easily deploy applications such as Nextcloud, Rocket Chat, Mastodon, WordPress, Pi-hole, Plex, Jenkins, and many more. In fact, there's over 100 applications available in the marketplace. If you want to set up a custom Linux instance, you could do that too. All the popular Linux distributions are available on the platform, including, but not limited to, Debian, CentOS, Fedora, Ubuntu, and many others. In fact, even Arch Linux is available. So check out Akamai Connected Cloud with the URL that you see on the screen right now, which will do two things. First, it'll help support this channel, which I'll really appreciate, and it'll also get you $100 in starter credit to check out the platform. And thank you yet again to Akamai for sponsoring this video. I really appreciate it. And now, I don't know about you, but I really want to dive into rsync. So how about we just go over to my terminal and I'll show you how to use it. So the first thing that we should do is find out whether or not rsync is installed in the first place. And for that, we can run command-v and then rsync just like this. And in my case, it is installed because I see output right here. If you don't see output on your end, then that means you have to install the rsync package in order to get started with it. But installing it should just be a matter of installing the rsync package with your distribution's package manager. For example, with apt, you could run apt install rsync, or maybe it's dnf install rsync. Just check your package manager for the rsync package, and that should be all you need. So if you have it installed, we can continue. And the basic idea behind rsync is that you use it to transfer files from one place to another. And it doesn't really matter what you transfer or even where you transfer it to, so long as you have access to what you're transferring and the directory where you're trying to store it in. By default, rsync uses SSH to facilitate file transfers, and this isn't unlike SCP, which also uses SSH to facilitate file transfers. But where rsync outshines SCP is its wealth of options that enable you to scrutinize your file transfers down to the very last detail. As we start out, let's see an example of very basic usage of rsync. Now we will get into hands-on examples later in the video. I'm just going to give you the basic syntax for now. And here's what it looks like. We type rsync, and maybe we want to sync a directory named dir1, just like that. And then we want to sync it maybe with a directory called dir2. Those directories can be on the local system. Maybe one of those directories is an NFS mount point that's mounted locally, but looks like a folder locally, but it's actually a remote mounted NFS store, for example. Now I don't have either directory on my system. I'm not going to run this, but I think you get the idea. We're seeking data from directory one over to directory two, and I just abbreviated it. Now the thing is, and this is also the beauty behind rsync, is that one of those directories, for all we know, could be a directory where an NFS or Samba share is mounted to. So even though it looks like we're copying data locally, if one of those directories is a mount point for a remote directory, then we're effectively just copying data over to a remote server, even with the syntax that you see on the screen right now. So what I'm going to do right now is prepare an example for you guys, but there is something very important that I'd like you to keep in mind. And that is that rsync isn't really a sync utility in every sense of the word, or at least in the way that we think of sync utilities nowadays. Yes, you're able to sync a directory to another directory, but it's not a bi-directional sync. So in the example I gave you, the hypothetical example, we have dir1, 
and dir2. So in that example, we're going to take the contents of dir1 and then sync them over to dir2. Now the second directory might already have things inside of it. Maybe it has nothing inside of it. But the thing is, it's just going to copy what's in the first directory with the second directory. By default, it's not going to make them identical. I just wanted to point this out because basically we're not looking at sync thing or something like that. Our sync is more of a one direction utility. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. So let's continue. Okay, so with all of that out of the way, let's see the example that I've prepared for you guys. So if I list my storage here, I have a directory called notes. Now, if I list the contents of that directory, I have, well, notes inside that folder. So I guess I gave it the right name, didn't I? Anyway, what you are actually seeing here is my legitimate notes directory. These are my actual note files right here. I save all of my notes in Markdown, and when I learn something new, I like to, well, keep good notes. So this is a very important directory for me. Now, to be fair, this is just a copy of my notes, not my, you know, notes folder that I use daily. I don't want to mess that up or anything. So what I did was just copy all of my notes to my footage PC here, and the example that we're going to work through is the hypothetical example that I want to back these up to a backup server. So I have the note files here on my footage PC, and then over here in the other tab, I have a Debian server. If I list the storage there, I have a backup directory. That's where I want to copy my notes files to. Inside that directory right now, though, I have nothing. So just wanted to show you what we're working with. Let's go ahead and start the example. Now, the first thing that you always want to check when you're using rsync is to make sure that you have access to everything you need before you start the sync. Now, I mentioned earlier that rsync is going to use SSH by default. And I know I'm able to access this server right here via SSH because, well, I'm connected to it right now. So check, we have that part taken care of. Now, I also have this backup directory right here. And since I'm going to be copying the notes files over to this directory via rsync, I need to make sure that I can actually write to this folder. So I could just do something silly, like create a test file or something. The touch command just creates an empty file, but my ability to do so proves that I can write inside this folder. And sure enough, the file is there. So the sanity check is passed. Not only am I able to access this server via SSH, I'm also able to write to the backup directory. So, so far so good. Now back here at the source PC, my footage PC, again, what I want to do is grab this notes directory. I want to back it up to my Debian server. And we're going to use rsync to accomplish that. And let's see the first example. So what we'll do is type rsync. And that's the command we're working with, so no surprise there. Next, what I want to do is grab the notes directory. That's the directory that I want to back up. And where do I want to back it up to? Well, I want to back it up to my Debian server. My username over there is J, and technically I don't have to type this because as you can see from the prompt, my username is J on both sides. So rsync is going to assume that my username is the same, even if it's not. I like to be explicit though. We don't have to type the user if the user is the same. I'll just leave that up to you. So we type the username and then at, and then we type the name of the server or the IP address of the server. If it's a local directory, obviously, you don't need to include this part at all because why include an IP address for a server if we're just copying things to a local backup folder? Anyway, what I'm going to do is type the IP address right here for the Debian server. And in case you're wondering, I do have DNS set up, but I also have a number of machines named Debian server right now. So I'm not going to use DNS and DNS is often a problem. So we're just going to ignore that. It doesn't really matter which one to use though, but we do need a server if we're going to back up to a server. And this is the server right here that I'm going to use for this purpose. Next, we type colon, and then we type the path where we want the backup to end up. So in my home directory, I have a backup directory just like that. Now I'm not going to press enter just yet because there's a very important option that I wanna give you guys first before we run this command. So what I'm going to do is go all the way over here. I'm going to add the dry run option. So that's dash dash dry dash run just like that. And this is really important. You never want to run rsync ever before testing it first. Sure, you might really feel like you know exactly what it's going to do, but you never know. I mean, you can make mistakes, it happens. So what dry run does is it activates what's essentially a demo mode. And this means that rsync will do a test run. It's not going to run for real. It's not going to actually copy anything, but it will make a connection to the target. It's going to check and see what's there. 
and it's going to calculate what it would have done if dry run was not included as an option. So what we could do is grab the output from this command and just make sure that what it's going to do is what we want it to do. Now, what I'll do is add the dash R option. I almost forgot that. That option is required since what I'm copying over is a directory, dash R is for recursive. So we're going to add that option and that's what I've done. So let's give it a shot. Let's see what happens. Well, that's interesting. It looks like nothing happened. We see no information here at all. And here's why. I'm going to give you another option. So what I'll do is I'll tack on option dash V, but I'm just going to include these together and we have dash RV. No, I'm not trying to synchronize a recreational vehicle, but the V option here, what that's going to do for us is activate verbose mode and it'll show you what it's going to copy. Now, obviously it'll copy nothing because of dry run, but at least it's going to show you what it would have done without the dash V option, it's not going to show us anything at all. And now we see a lot more information, don't we? If I scroll through the output here, I see a list of everything that rsync would have copied over to the other server if I was running this for real. And just to prove that it didn't copy anything at all, if I go back over here to my Debian server, and then I list the backup directory, there's nothing inside that directory, and that makes sense. I included the dry run option. You even see that right here where it shows dry run. Now what I'm going to do is recall the most recent command and I'm going to remove dry run. So the basic workflow here is that you first make sure that rsync is working and that it's going to do exactly what you think it will. Once you are confident with the output, after you audit the output, then you remove the dry run option to run it for real. So I'll run it again. Let's see what happens. So we see the same output again, but notice that dry run is not listed in the output at all. So if I didn't know any better, I think it might have actually copied files over to the target. Let's see if I'm right. So here we are in my Debian server. And we have the notes directory there in the backup directory. And we have all the same files. So we have successfully copied files from my local footage PC over to my Debian server. So far, so good. So I'm sorry to interrupt my own video, but did you know that there's a dedicated community page set up for this channel? Well, there is. You could go to community.learnlinux.tv and chat with other Linux fans. All you have to do is go to that page and sign up for an account and I'll approve your account within a couple of days. You know, I'm always making content for you guys, so I might be glued to the camera, but if you sign up for an account, I'll approve your account within a few days and then you could chat with us. So come on in and hang out with other Learn Linux TV fans, I would really appreciate that. Okay, so for the next example, what I wanna show you guys is that you can also grab files from the target and then copy them locally, basically the reverse of what we've just done. So what I'll do is remove everything inside my notes directory. You don't have to follow along with this, I'm just resetting the example. And now my notes directory here locally is completely empty. So what I'll do is run rsync again, and again, just like last time, I'll use option dash R and dash V, recursive and verbose. Next, what I'll do is type my username at the remote end because I'm reversing this at this point. The IP address was this one right here. And the path was this one here, my home directory, backup, and then notes. I want to grab everything inside this directory. And what I want to do is save it in my local notes directory. So effectively I'm simulating a scenario where I've accidentally cleared out all of my notes and I need to restore them from a backup. So what I'll do is press enter and let's see what happens. Well, something happened. Let's take a look at the notes directory and see what's inside of it. My notes are back. How cool was that? And here's the command again that I used to accomplish that. The command is basically mostly the same as the first one. However, it's a little bit different. Notice that I have a trailing slash at the end of notes on both sides. That just means that I don't want to grab the notes directory and end up with a notes directory inside of my notes directory. The slash designates that I want everything underneath it. And what that'll do is copy all of my notes locally and you just saw that it worked. So, so far so good. However, I did notice a bit of a problem. I'm not sure if you noticed this on your end, everything kind of flew right by, but what I'll do is go into the notes directory and I'll show you the error that I found. 
And this is on my end. I had a typo in one of the file names. And I'm not sure if you could see it, but on the bottom row here, we have ssh.md5. These are markdown files, not md5 hashes, so that's not a valid name to call the file. Now, it doesn't really matter because the contents are all that's important, but I do want to fix this. These are my notes, so what I'll do is just move ssh.md5, and I'll move that to ssh.md, the file name that it should have had all along. And now it's fixed. But what does this have to do with rsync? Well, what I'm going to do right now is show you one of the gotchas when it comes to rsync. And to illustrate the gotcha, I'm just going to bring up the first command that we ran right here. I'm going to copy everything over to the remote server again. Reason being, I just corrected a file name. I want to make sure that my backup also has that change as well. So what I'll do is run this command right here, and I'll show you the gotcha that I'm referring to. And it looks like everything was successful, but like I mentioned, there is a gotcha here. So I'll show you what I'm talking about right now. So if I go over here to my Debian server, and then I list the contents of the directory I backed up to, so far we have the backup directory, and underneath there we have notes, so so far so good. So let's list the contents of the notes directory. Now notice I have both ssh.md and the original ssh.md5. So what this means is that even though I renamed the file on the source, it just copied it to the target. It didn't replace the original one. It's not a true sync. And rsync doesn't remove anything from the target by default. So even if you rename something, you're just going to have a file with the original name and the new one unless you take action. Now, I just wanted to mention this because again, it's not a sync utility despite the name. Yes, you can sync directories, but it's not a sync solution in the way that we think of them now. Let's go ahead and go back to our original terminal here, and let's see how we can fix this problem. Now again, this is the command right here that we ran just now to copy everything over to the target. It's also the command that duplicated everything. Now, what I'm going to do is add another option. And the option that I'm going to add is dash dash delete, as you see here. And what that's going to do is delete anything in the target directory that doesn't exist at the source directory. Now locally, I renamed the file. SSH.md5 was renamed to SSH.md. So when I sync this over, it should take care of the fact that I have a duplicated file. It'll again delete anything at the target that's not at the source. So let's see what happens. So over here on the Debian server, if I list the contents of the directory again, we only have the proper name, ssh.md, just like that. And here, let's take a look at my local directory. We have the same file, ssh.md, again, that was renamed to ssh.md from its invalid name. And now that I added the dash dash delete option, that's going to be closer to a sync. It's not going to be exactly the same thing, but it is going to make the target directory a duplicate of the source directory. Anything that's not located within the source will be removed from the target, and that's exactly what happened. Now, both directories have the same contents, but it's still not completely the same. For example, if I list the storage here, we can see the dates here. And if I go over here to the target server, and also use the long listing for ls. We can see that the times are not going to match up. We can see that they're different when I go through the two different machines right here. So even though it did copy all the data over to the target, the modification times are different. And that brings me to the most popular rsync option of all, the dash a option. So I'll recall the previous command, the most recent one that we ran, this one right here. And what I'll do is add the option A for archive mode. And what rsync's archive mode will do is do its due diligence to make sure that the metadata is also the same. So let's see it. And now we can see that the modification times are the same on both. Check this out. They're exactly the same. And that's the reason why archive mode is so awesome. Now, another option that I'm going to give you, I'm not going to run it. It's pretty easy to explain, so I'll just type it in, and then I'll explain what it does. Here we have the Z option. 
And what that's going to do is compress the files as they transfer. Now, this isn't something that you want to run every single time, but if you are contending with a slower connection, then this might help you get the transfer done quicker. If you have a really good connection between your source and your target, then you probably won't want to use the Z option because that's just going to add compression where it's not going to benefit you. But it is an option if you are contending with a slower connection, that might be something that you may want to do in the future. So if nothing else, you can write that down and put it in your notes. Now there's one more option that I will explain to you guys. I'm not going to go over all of the options of rsync. It's pretty much impossible to do in one video anyway, so I'm just focusing on the most useful here. But this is an option that you might want to consider. To add this option, what I'll do is remove the Z option since it doesn't benefit me anyway. And I'll remove the dash dash delete option. And what I'll type in its place is dash dash remove dash source dash files, just like that. And what this option will do is remove the source files, as the name implies, as it transfers. So when it copies over a file, it's going to remove it locally. So this is more of a move than a sync. But I'll just press enter, run the command, and you'll see what I'm talking about. And let's go over to the other server here. We still have our files. Now on the local machine here, we have nothing. Now it didn't need to copy anything because the files were already at the target. But since I added the option, they were removed from the source. So what that does, like I mentioned, is perform a transfer rather than a sync. And there's our video. In this video, I gave you some basic examples of rsync in action. And there's all kinds of options like I mentioned, so I can't go over everything in one video, but what I did go over should be enough to get you started. And you know what? The archive mode is the most popular, so with that option, that carries you pretty far. It's the option that's most used and is something you should definitely write down in your notes. Archive mode, like I mentioned earlier, will give you more of a sync because it copies metadata as well. Now there's other rsync related videos on this channel, and this isn't the last time I'll cover it anyway, but I hope what I've shown you so far gets you up and running. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. But anyway, I really appreciate you watching this video. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already done so.